In this video, we're going to add a controller to our application. So the code that we've written so far, we could call it user interface code. Uh, we, so we could call it a view, it's part of the view. That's the part of the application that the user sees and interacts with. And what we're gonna do is add a class which we're gonna call controller, and we'll consider that to be controller code. So that's code that monitors the view and figures out what to do and then tells the view what to do. So let's right click the one and only package we've got and create a new class, which I'll call controller. If I was gonna be purist about this, I would put this in a completely separate package to the view. I'd put the controller code in one package, the view code in a separate package, but I'm not gonna be purist about it here. Also, I might in a bigger application take the view that the controller shouldn't know anything about any view classes. We should separate the two via interfaces, but here I'm not going to follow that rule. I'm going to have a private main frame, main frame variable in the controller here. And then I'm going to right click here and create a constructor. Let's go to source, generate constructor using fields, make sure main frame is ticked create a constructor and I'll just get rid of that call to super, which isn't needed. One rule that I am going to follow is I'm not going to allow the view code to know anything about my controller. So it shouldn't know the controller even exists. We don't want to tangle the two parts of the code base up together too much. That will create a rat's nest. So let's go to app.java now. And in there, I'm going to get rid of this uh, call to mainframe new to the constructor of mainframe. Now this uh, info later takes an object that implements the runnable interface which has one method called run which takes no parameters and that means I can replace this with a lambda expression like this. And now we can put the code that we want to run in there. And what I want to do here is create a new main frame. So main frame, main frame equals new main frame. So this is equivalent to the code that we had previously, but the difference is now I can say new controller and pass the main frame reference to that so that the controller has access to the main frame. Then if we go to controller, I can get, get it to listen for mouse presses on the main frame. So let's say main frame dot add mouse listener. This accepts something that implements the mouse listener interface, which has lots of different methods in it, or several anyway. So to avoid having to implement all of those methods, instead we can use the mouse adapter class, which has dummy implementations of the mouse listener methods. So I can say here new mouse adapter adapter and in curly brackets, I can actually override whichever particular methods I want to override. Let's add the import for that. And then right click and go to source override implement methods. And I'm gonna just override mouse pressed and click okay. If we get rid of this call to super mouse press, which I don't think we need. And if I do a system.out.print line and just print hello, or something, we should be able to detect mouse clicks, mouse presses on the main frame. And you can see it's saying hello down there in a the console. Now, when uh, the mouse is pressed, what I want to do is for the moment, what I want to do is just flip from one of these cards here, these panels to the other. So I just want to cycle through them. So the first thing that I need to do is I want to give um, main frame here an explicit state variable so it can track easily what state it's currently in. And depending on what state it's in, it will show one of these four cards as appropriate to that state. Let's set that initially to state.greet, the kind of initial state. Now I want um, get state and set state methods, but uh, mainframe actually has a set state method, I think, it comes from J component if I remember correctly. So instead of calling this set state, I'm gonna do something like set app state. 
let's have a void set app state and that'll just accept a state variable and we'll do this dot state equals state but what I also want to do here is set the appropriate card for that state so let's cut that code from there and put it in here and we want to say that I want to show not state dot wait dot to string but state dot to string get rid of this extra space and we also want a get app state so void get app state and all this has to do is just return this dot state which is just actually the same as state here so actually that should be public state and this should be public as well okay so now if we go to the controller uh, when the mouse is pressed let's call a method called something like uh, on user input or something like that I'm not really sure what to call this I'm going to implement this method down here so this will be protected or private void on user input and this is going to react to user input in this case the mouse being pressed so the first thing I'm going to do is get the state from mainframe so mainframe dot get app state and if the state is currently state dot greet then what I'm going to do is I could use a switch here as well just pressing the wrong keys a bit here can't actually see my keyboard because my mic's in the way I've never figured out what to do about this problem so now if this if we're in state dot greet and the user presses the mouse we're going to go to state so set up state and state dot click and then let's maybe copy this so else if state equals uh, state dot click so state dot click we're going to go to state dot actually I think um, the next state should be wait so I'm going to say if the state state dot greet then go to wait if the state is wait then go to click if the state is click then go to results and if the state is results let's cycle back to the beginning so results then we will go back to greet so there's our business logic implemented in the controller it's not the final thing yet but it should allow us to cycle through these cards if I've got this right so let's click this well let's let's run it and then click it and you can see that goes to the next sort of card or panel and then another one and another one and then back to the beginning again so in the next video well, we definitely want to change these colors a bit I think make them more interesting otherwise what's the point of even having uh, background and foreground colors that we can set and I think we might actually be able to finish the app in the next video I'm not 100% sure but all we really need to do now is add a timer and some code to figure out how long it took the user to react but there are a few odds and ends so it's possible I might have to spread it over two videos but we shall see so do join me again for that and don't forget if you want a systematic introduction to swing then on caverprogramming.com my site I've got this swing tutorial and I've got lots of other tutorials as well so this swing tutorial takes you like right from basics really uh, methodically through through a great deal of um, swing so you should be able to write swing apps pretty well after going through that course and if you need to brush up your Java I also have beginners and advanced Java courses the advanced Java course actually 
not sure if I should have called it advanced Java because it actually talks about a lot of different technologies that you would use typically with Java, as well as various different things you can do with Java if you're kind of doing Java at a more advanced level. But my beginner's course as well actually goes pretty advanced. So I've got this older Java for complete beginner's course. And I've also got a Java 11 for beginners course, which is much more up to date, but you have to pay for it. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.